Hi, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies, and this is the Two Point Acuity 33. The bow comes in three sizes. I'm going to get this probably wrong 28, 30, maybe 1, and 33. So this is the longer of the three. Six inch brace height, speed of 338. Um, it's meant to weigh 4.7. Machine riser, and someone asked what's the alloy. It's a 6061, so that's I think that's like what everyone else uses. Um, so let's look at this bow, um, discuss it, see how it shoots, see how I shoot with it. Now, six inch brace height is going to be a little bit harder to shoot. It's got big cams. These are very much like your Hoyt cams. Uh, it's a twin cam system with yokes. Um, it's a pretty standard type of system. The drawing is adjustable by about half an inch or a little bit, or a little bit less adjustment. So each setting is not half an inch. So on the C setting, there's two adjustments. So for me, I'm 20, I've got it at 29. There's 28.75 and 28 and a half. Okay, so, but it's not that all these settings are in half increments, okay, or a quarter inch increments, they're not. They're like, they've got 29s. I'll pull up the chart so you can sort of see. But they have micro adjustments. There's no adjustability in let off because it's just set set and place. You got three screws. This is just a loose one. You have to take off these two screws to adjust the modules. You do not need a bow press to do that. Um, you can see the settings on the back here. Um, there's a chart to tell you what size draw length. Um, metal yoke, this is a little bit different from toe point. The cable system looks like a Matthews. Um, toe point have changed their cable guard. It's now bolted in three times in the riser. This looks nice. I'm not aware of anyone else who does it like this, although you can prove me wrong and maybe they've copied from someone else. In the past, Toe Point would get in trouble from copying from Matthews, okay? So I do not see any form of Matthews in here whatsoever. The cable guard is aluminium, uh, sorry, is carbon, and it's got a nice sort of 3K kind of texture in it. Roller cable slide, this has got a nice, um, the string stop's got a nice texture finish. This looks nice, it's adjustable. This looks a bit like a PSE. Um, the limbs, these are American Gordon Glass limbs. So it's the same as used by other bow companies or every other bow company. Limb pockets are aluminium. There's no locking feature on the limb, so you can't lock them down. It's got like a cage riser. This is, you know, somewhat like an Elite. Although it's also like their target version bow. So this will be fairly interesting. The bow weighs 4.7 pounds, so it's not light. Um, speed, if I didn't get this already, 338. I'd expect it faster given the shorter brace height. So balance on the bow, slightly forward in the hand. Um, I would have liked a slightly bigger brace height, but that's just sort of me talking. Um, I haven't drawn this bow, I haven't done anything with it. So this is me the first time on camera. It came fitted with a peep sight, um, whether it's in the right spot or not, the peep sight is tied around here. And in this video I'm going to mention no bow company covers strings and cables. If you dry fire your bow, shoot it without an arrow and the peep pops out and cuts the strings, it's not covered. Okay? If the peep comes out and you shot the arrow, not covered. Strings are not covered on any bow anywhere, right? So whatever reason you're going to come up with why your string's sliced, it's not covered by any bow manufacturer. Right, so I'm making that point because I've had that from a couple of people in the past week. Um, let's just get this lined up. Right, so the first arrow I'm shooting is a gold tip velocity 400, weighs 327. <laughs> Uh, to get a th speed of 338, I think it's around 300 feet per second is what you expect at 60 pounds. Now this bow is also only adjustable by 10 pounds. I wouldn't suggest this for beginners because of the, only the 10 pound adjustment in weight. So this is more for someone who's more experienced in archery. Price tag is interesting. So 750 US dollars is the recommended retail. In Australia, it's going to be retailing around 800 Australian dollars, which puts it under the 750. Um, so let's just try the draw. This feels easy. Stacking up now.
and then dropping, 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 locks in. Well, we're going to take this shot. Two nine three. Now you can see how low that peep was. A lot of the Chinese companies do this, and when I say do this, the gap's not big enough here. So I'm going to try and make this adjustment. So I'm going to slide that up, slide the peep up, slide this up. That's moved really, really well. We're going to unhook the peep. Look, this. Let's get tie that on. And we're going to try it again. So 293, that's not bad. Um, I'm going to say the draw cycle it didn't feel like 60. Now in the past with Toe Point, I've had bows which are meant to be 60 and they come in around 55. It feels like a, it probably feels like about a 54 pound bow. It's an easy draw cycle. That's why you're only getting the 338 IBO speeds out of it. Look, it's nice, there's no vibration, 286. This little tag's getting in the way, so that's got to come off. Now the tag, uh, it's just a silly spot for it there, because it's right where the sight window is. It'd be nice if this was on the bow. Um, it's just a bad spot for it. 286. Now these are 3D HVs from Victory. These are going to be about 20 feet per second faster. They're a 400 spine. Now the Velocity is a fast gold tip shaft. This is a fast victory shaft, um, and they're always about 20 feet per second faster than gold, sit, gold tip. So the last one was 286, so I'm going to expect um, a little bit above 300. Three hundred feet per second. The little peak came off. Um, it's always a bit unfortunate. We'll wax you in the face, but wouldn't be my video unless something like that happened. Right now, these arrows. Uh, VXTs, uh, 400 spined, I think they're 400, 355. Look, there are, I think the weight on these is 370 grains. They should come in around 270 from memory, based on that it's a 330 feet per second boat. The grip is, it feels like a PSE grip. If you know what a PSC grip feels like, it's not too wide, not too fat. It's, um, you know, the PSC have changed their grips in the current year, so you don't know if it's wide, thin, or thin, but it's, it feels like a standard kind of grip. Um, it's, Hoyt have got a round grip for their hunting bows. It's thicker than the Hoyt Target grip. Uh, the Elite Grips sort of tape it in so it doesn't feel like that. It feels like the old PSE Grips. It's a very common feeling grip. <laughs> 270. Look. Peepside, this peep rubber is just way too short. It needs to be longer. I think I could probably shoot this without the rubber. I don't know how much rotation I'll get on the strings. Um, look, the quality of the bow, the printing looks nice on the limbs. It looks really nicely machined all around. Lower stabilizer point here. Look, $800. It's pretty, pretty good on the market. Um, I'm going to take this back now, sight in at 18, and sort of see how well we shoot with it. Okay, so I think I've sighted the bow in, but it was a little bit higher, so I'm going to adjust my sight as I normally do, up a little bit. Let's see how it goes. Uh, how do I think I'll shoot this bow before I start? 
six inch brace height is always a little bit hard and you get a little bit of twitchiness. I shoot better with seven inches. The draw length feels a little bit long at 29, but I think it's pretty much spot on. All right, so with this bow, I'd shoot it at uh, 28 and three quarters. The bow, when I shoot this bow, I feel like, well, which bow does this remind me the most of? And the bow it reminds me the most of is the Evolution 35 from PSC from five, five, six years ago. It very much reminds me of that in the draw, the feel. It's a very nice draw cycle, very easy. Um, so I'm going to get the, when I do reviews, I always think, well, which bow would I prefer? Now, Toe Point has come out with some great colors for this bow. I think they look really nice. Um, and I think toe points come a long way. Like this has got roller bearings. I like the way the can the module like locks in place twice. It's a very solid draw stop. It's got such a lot solid draw stop because this goes so long, so you can't crank back on it. It's a very nice bow. I mean, for, as a hunting bow, like is this a really a 3D bow or is it a hunting bow? As a hunting bow, you'd probably want silencers on the limbs. I'm not sure why they didn't, why toe point didn't add those in. I think um, some dampness in the riser, not that I'm feeling any shock or vibration in the bow. I just think like dampness on the riser would be a good thing just to absorb a bit of the noise. And it's not like it's noisy, but it is, it is noisier than some of the $1,500, $2,000 bows on the market today. But it's half that price, so then I'm like, well, it's not too bad. So I think when I'm shooting this bow, I think, well, what's Toe Point done with the design of this bow? What could they improve? Where does it sit in the marketplace? So I have two old PSE Evolutions in my store secondhand right now. So they're six years old. They're in good condition. And they're selling for $750. This sells for 800 brand new. And my question to myself, would I prefer a secondhand six-year-old bow or would I prefer this bow? And I have no clear answer on that, which means the pricing is very about right for the second hand bow and about right for this bow in my view. Now, when it comes to comparing new and new, I'm going to have to compare the PSC Stinger. Uh, Stinger's fractionally cheaper in price than this, but not much. Um, this is faster, more adjusted. Well, it doesn't have the adjustability in the poundage. So this is rating, the problem I have, this is, Toe Point has made a bow to try and compete with your $1,500 American bows. So your cheap American bows, which this competes with, are adjustable for beginners in poundage. This bow is not, because you've only got the 10 pound weight adjustment. I think this bow is clearly better than your equivalent price American compound bows. I don't, I just don't even th see there's a question in this. It's a full machine riser, metal limb pockets, it's balanced, it feels nice, it looks great. You just don't get that with the um, inexpensive budget American compound bows. Most of them are going to be cast risers, most of them are going to be plastic limb pockets, and they're not going to be it's just not going to be the same as this. So then, so then I think, well, which bow would I prefer? Now, it then gets me thinking about the quality of the strings. Now for $200 from gas, you can buy a set of strings for this bow. And then they're going to be pretty good. You can see these strings are served in the middle through the cable roller. And I'm not saying these strings are bad. I just 
don't have the experience with how these strings will go and how they last and peep rotation and all that sort of stuff. They might be absolutely fine. And I certainly wouldn't be changing them because I'm not going to spend $200 on a set of strings. Um, I would just shoot the, I would just shoot the boat. Um, but even if I did spend $200 on a set of strings, and then, then I have a thousand dollar bow, so how does that compete against the thousand dollar bows on the market? So, I've got to compare it to the PSE Drive, one of the best selling bows in my store. I think this competes very well. The drive is more adjustable as far as as far as poundage. I think the drive now has a tunability system. I'd have to rate it to the Elite Terrain, which is a nice bow. This bow shoots. I think it shoots pretty good. The bow is surprisingly stable to aim. The sight pin's not moving from side to side. And that's what I expected with the six inch brace on. I'm not seeing it. It's not moving. There's a fair bit of wind around. I don't know if you can see the wind, but there's a fair bit of wind around. Um, very, I assume my grip down there is pretty good. I assume, um, I don't know. Um, I just know the sight pin's stable. The draw is really nice. I shoot well with bows with a good draw sight. Well, okay, that might have been me. Well, no, that was me. Let's move around a bit. No, it's just. I released it in the two o'clock in the nine. Anyway. Look, I'm, I think this bow is really good. Two screws here to hold the cable carbon rod in stock. Look, I okay. So the bits that you that I'd probably like to see, I'd like the ability to fit a two-piece quiver in here. Not that there's many two-piece quivers on the market, because otherwise you've got to fit it here. Um, I'd like some limb dampeners with it, and I'd like probably somewhere to fit some sort of dampener on the riser. Um, I like this, but it's pretty good. Man. Eight hundred dollars. Okay, let's go and take a look at that group. Okay, so I've got no idea what happened with this one. It's coming at a weird angle, so I don't know. Oh, I lost a flight. So one flight's off it. The other group is really, really good. Like, really good. Like, I'm very, very happy with that. Um, so my view is I'd be better with a slightly shorter draw length with this bow. Um... I would like a little bit more adjustability in poundage than 10 pounds. If it went 20 pounds worth of adjustment, I think this opens up the whole bow to a whole bunch of people. And all you need is a bigger limb bolt. So I say to, I'm gonna say Mr. Lee, um, I feel like the owner of every Chinese company is Mr. Lee and it's not, but I feel like it is. Um, like just a little bit limb, bigger limb bolt to get 15 to 20 pounds worth of adjustment because now you've just opened this up to the whole beginner and I'm not saying beginner but the intermediate market um, so today I priced up cams from Toy Point um, so if you dry fire your bow you're going to blow up the cams not covered by warranty um, I'm going to get this number wrong but it'll be close $160 retail for a set 
um, I think that's pretty good includes the modules the limbs are pretty inexpensive I think for toe point if you blow them up and I'm gonna say I haven't had any toe point limbs break and that's in forever so I've only had people dry fire their toe points and do the cams but it's been for a beginner line bow it's been really really amazingly good so how do I rate the Acuity 33? I think it's really, really good. I just really, really good. So I think Toy Points come a long way as a company. I could like I could see this in stores in America and doing very, very well. Um, it's very good. I would like to see this bow in a 35 inch axle axle with a slightly bigger brace height, maybe a six and a half or seven inch brace height. And I think that would be, that'd be a really nice market. But overall, really good market, really nicely finished, really well put together bow. Um, I suppose the last thing, if you're doing green, maybe green strings. If you're doing orange, maybe sort of some sort of orange strings. But Toe Point do a whole bunch of colors. It's, it's a very, very good bow very impressed um, and I definitely rate it and against the I'm gonna go against the PSEs and the elites and the bow techs the top end line look the top end the top end American line stuff has got more adjustability in let off more adjustability in um, tuning but it's twice the price right it's twice the price and not everyone has that budget so at eight at eight hundred dollars i would be more than happy to shoot this um and i think i could shoot it reasonably well and i think that's pretty good like i think that's really really good just a pity my veins just a pity my veins are falling off these arrows are quite old um and that's no thing at flex fletch because these arrows are literally i probably fletched these arrows up six years ago um just a problem when they fall off in my reviews but that's okay we, we take that um really good i think toe point's done really great um check out the whole toe point range now i know if you're in america toe point is not going to be in a local store um i know walmart and some of those big box stores are starting to import toe point um if you're a store in america and china and in canada and in europe i would suggest looking at the brand toe point uh, to import because it opens up a whole new market for you you've just gone away from the elite archers to a whole bunch of new people in the sport and it's going to keep your shop really busy um, and what you want is a busy shop or maybe you don't maybe you just want to sell one Hoyt bow a week or one Matthews bow a week and make your margin but this the toe point stuff I sell a heap of it I really do um, and I haven't I haven't had any problems in in years so yeah and they do a whole range of stuff recurves target bows hunting bows beginners bows kids bows accessories yeah go and take a look at it 800 bucks value thanks for watching bye and sort of see how well we shoot with it.